morning, everyone. Uh, just wanted to share with you some uh, information on my strawberry variety update, uh, which is this will probably be the last, hopefully be the last uh, discussion on these combinations of uh, varieties that we've been looking at. Um, this is a five year study, so we've uh, been able to um, I think get enough information um, out of these varieties. Okay. Uh, but first of all, as we all know that consumer, uh, that uh, strawberry production has increased uh, throughout the nation and it's increased in, in Alabama also, um, be it through um, uh, increased consumer awareness of uh, health promoting qualities of, of strawberries or just, uh, just the fact that they're just plain good to eat. And uh, not only have we seen an increase in production overall, but an increase in the number of households that are purchasing strawberries. So this is a pretty good thing uh, for the strawberry industry. Uh, but uh, the most productive varieties that we have are from the uh, from California breeding programs and from Florida breeding programs. And so uh, it's it's especially important to determine how these varieties perform in our environment since uh, strawberries are, are uh, very uh, environmentally sensitive. And so, but the, and there's little documented information concerning the uh, performance um, of these strawberries as well as the quality. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the consumer awareness of health promoting mm -hmm. qualities uh, uh, way into uh, the, the purchase of these strawberries. So we're looking at um, both uh, yield performance as well as the quality. All right, so the objective, uh, determine production potential, as well as the antioxidant concentration of selected strawberry cultivars in order to enhance the sustainability of strawberry industry in Alabama. All right, so this, as I mentioned, was a, uh, was a five-year evaluation. Uh, and it, uh, we planted on an annual hill plastic culture. Uh, system. Um, as the name implies, it is an annual system. It's just taking a perennial plant and um, making it, uh, using it as an annual plant. Uh, we used black plastic mulch and uh, resulted in about 15,000 plants per acre. And uh, we use plug plants in our, uh, in our planting. Uh, we feel that plug plantings are, uh, plug plants are a lot easier to use and they're a lot more forgiving if you uh, make mistakes. All right, and these are the varieties that we've used. As I mentioned, that uh, this will probably be, uh, and hopefully be the uh, last uh, discussion on these, this particular combination of, of varieties. We, I think we have enough information uh, to determine uh, how well these varieties will perform in, at least in central Alabama. Uh, we are looking forward to getting a, a new group of varieties. And, we won't uh, abandon these all together. There will be some that we'll use just uh, as sort of comparison to some of the new varieties. So uh, what data did we collect? Uh, we looked at the uh, plant size and stolen number. Uh, what, uh, you know, what is the significance of this data, the plant size and stolon number? Uh, plant size is an indicator or can be an indicator of yield overall. Uh, plants that are larger tend to produce uh, uh, more fruit, although there has been some, um, there's uh, some conflicting uh, data in the, uh, in the literature that would, that would suggest otherwise. Uh, but uh, plant size can also play a role, especially if you are in a, a pick your own operation uh, where, um, you know, the, if we have an increase in plant size, you can have uh, an, an area at time where you're not able to really see the plants or see the fruit that grow, uh, not growers, but uh, customers aren't able to see the fruit. Um, and so that leaves fruit behind and just left to be an inoculum for, uh, for fruit disease. Uh, so it becomes a management issue. Uh, stolon number, uh, those, of course, you know, that leads to the stolons need, lead to daughter plants. and. And then annual hill plastic culture system, a stolon number, uh, the number of stolons isn't as important. It becomes more or less a detriment uh, in this system as opposed to the 
uh, the Matt at Rose system, uh, which is a, a, a perennial system, and it's driven by the uh, the daughter plants. But in this system, we really don't want a whole lot of stolons, so that becomes a management issue. So we looked at that. Uh, we're also looking at yield, um, both early and total, and as I mentioned, uh, fruit quality. Uh, we tend to look at soluble solids as the uh, main indicator of fruit quality, uh, soluble solids or or sweetness as the main uh, indicator of uh, of quality. Uh, but there are some other um, some other uh, aspects of the fruit that play into the flavor profile. Uh, antioxidants may be one of them, but antioxidants have a, another uh, another role. Um, uh, there are cancer fighting agents. So first off, let's we'll start with the strawberry size. And uh, Camarosa, as we can see, Camarosa is a pretty large plant. And as I mentioned, this can be this can be an issue when you're uh, when you have a, a you pick operation. Um, the uh, customers are going to go to the fruit that they see, and and oftentimes they leave a lot of fruit behind, and it's left for an inoculum, uh, left as inoculum for uh, for disease, and it also uh, causes the grower to have to send his workers out in the field to sort of clean up and find uh, find those fruit and harvest those. So that that's an added cost. And uh, the larger the fruit, the larger the, the plant, it also is an indicator of, uh, well, it's, it can be a problem when it comes to spraying pesticides. So you have a better coverage if you have, uh, if you have more space between the plants. And we can see Camino Real. Uh, it is a uh, it's a much smaller plant, a significantly smaller plant. Produces really nice compact plants. Uh, there there is comp talk about maybe uh, taking advantage of this space that's left um, by these smaller plants and increasing the plant population. But most growers would probably just leave that space there so that, um, especially if they have a U-pick operation, uh, so that they can get better pesticide coverage as well as uh, increased visibility of the fruit. Okay, so that brings us to the number of stolons. And we can see that uh, Ruby June produces a significantly, uh, produces significantly fewer um, stolons than, than all of the others. Uh, we can see in 2020, and I, I will point out though that in 2020 we took these measurements later in the year, and in 2021 we took them pretty early. But you can see that there's uh, with Ruby June in 2021, uh, there's really not a column there. There, there is, there is data there, but it can't be seen on the column. So it just, it just shows you how low um, the um, production of um, Stolons are in Ruby June. Now, if you were planting Ruby June in a matted row system, this this could be a problem. But in an annual hill plastic culture system, this is this works pretty what pretty good. Then we can see that Camino Real, along with uh, and Camarosa, along with being uh, well, Camarosa, along with being a large, relatively large plant, it also produces uh, uh, a number of uh, stolons per plant. So this leads us to the yield, berry size, and cull. Uh, uh, Camino Real and Ruby June were uh, both the most comparable to uh, Camarosa. Uh, both had uh, lower cull fruit number, and as well, and the berry size is are tended to be uh, comparable to Camarosa. And then some years, uh, especially Ruby June, um, those fruit can be a, a little bit larger than Camarosa. Uh, Camino Real, there's been an issue though with the, the uh, I don't know, I'm talking about yield here, but I'll, I'll interject here with flavor. Uh, Camino Real tended to, uh, tends to have a reduced sugar or reduced flavor. And, uh, and that has been a problem in the past, but some growers said that they didn't notice it. And their clientele even say that uh, the dairy is, is really, really good. 
Rubiduno, on the other hand, produces a uh, very tasty berry. It's not, the yield is not quite there, um, but uh, compared to Camino and Camarosa, but it produces a pretty tasty berry. Uh, unfortunately, the yields aren't quite as, as, as high as, as those others. So this leads us to quality. Um, I got a little ahead of myself though when I start talking about sweetness, um, but uh, the sweetness of Camarosa or Camino Real uh, does tend to be uh, a little low. Uh, Camino Real has, and it cor has a corresponding uh, low soluble solids. Uh, but I will mention that Ruby June tends to have, can sometimes have low soluble solids. And even when it has soluble solids that are low, lower than the rest, it still has great flavor. So there's more playing in the flavor than just the soluble solids. There's, there's some other uh, components in that flavor profile uh, that's uh, providing uh, that excellent flavor. So in summary, uh, starting with plant size, Camino Real was uh, smaller. It was a slightly more comparable to Al, uh, Albion, but uh, is slightly smaller than Albion. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this growers could take it, take advantage of this uh, compactness of the fruit of the plant by maybe planting them a little closer. But uh, I think that most growers will probably take advantage of this and allow this to to remain as a, a, a way of increasing the vis visibility of the berries. Uh, Ruby June uh, had low stolon number, and this, uh, again, can be uh, a great uh, management uh, benefit, uh, reduction in costs, hopefully, and reduction in labor. Uh, these, it is recommended that the stolons be removed once they start because they will uh, hinder the yield. And so uh, with Ruby June, there's uh, not as many stolons to have to remove, um, as opposed to Cam uh, Camino Real, which was among the highest stolons, uh, at least when the stolons were counted later in the season. Uh, Camino Real and Ruby June are most comparable in yield to uh, Camarosa, as well as uh, they are also comparable to Camarosa in berry size. Both had uh, lower cull fruit, and, uh, which is again another uh, management uh, benefit in management. And that's fewer fruit that have to be uh, taken out, have to be picked through and um, increasing the labor costs and time dedicated to this and, and taken away from other things, other activities in the uh, operation. And soluble solids varied uh, throughout the season, for, well, throughout the five years, but Ruby June still had excellent flavor uh, regardless of the uh, soluble solid content. And one thing that we noticed in anthocyanin content is that uh, the anthocyanins tended to run a little low in Ruby June. Uh, this could play uh, play into the fact that uh, you know, as as consumer awareness grows, um, they're going to be more interested in uh, compounds like this in berries, and uh, breeders are more interested in this and in trying to uh, increase this for um, uh, higher uh, concentrations in berries. So in conclusion, plant characteristics, uh, yield, and fruit qualities indicate that Camino Real and Ruby June offer potential alternatives to Camarosa in Alabama. And I will say that uh, Maybe Camaro Ruby June to a lesser degree. I think in uh, fields where you've got a little, you've got a few more stresses, uh, both Camino Real and Ruby June probably won't do as well as Camarosa uh, in terms of yield. Uh, but uh, Camino Real tends to be a little more comparable to Camarosa, even in those situations. Uh, Ruby June tends to uh, drop off a little bit because it uh, it is a little less adapted um, when. Uh, you have those more challenging environmental uh, factors. So some points to remember. Uh, plug versus bare root. I like plug plants. Uh, as I mentioned, these are better. Uh, they, they're uh, more 
tolerant to mistakes and and we do make uh, quite a few and uh and so it's I, I think it's beneficial to get these these are a little more expensive and but some growers really like working with bare root plants and they work well for them uh one thing to remember is that uh, these uh, new operations, uh, you know, as, as Ed uh, Sakura mentioned, um, you know, we kind of have a, an issue with uh, uh, the uh, number of operations uh, providing plants. Uh, but the the operations that we deal with now, they have a minimum order, so you have to be up, just ask them up front, you know, what that minimum order is, and how much do you pay up front? Some require, you know, maybe half. The, uh, the the cost, the half the total cost of the berries. And one thing to remember is, uh, if if at all possible, uh, do not delay in placing your order. Uh, you know, place your order as soon as as you can, as soon as the they are available. Um, this will help you to uh, not only get the the types of berries that you want, but also the number of berries. And uh, you know, if you wait too late, you 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 may not be able to get any at all. So um now is the time actually it's, it's getting a little a little late so if you have not ordered uh, if you if you know growers that who have not ordered uh you know encourage them to go ahead and place their orders um and uh camino real and uh ruby june uh, you know they have been used in or at least i know ruby uh, camino real has been used uh, in uh, uh, in operations when uh, in years where Camarosa wasn't available, uh, and the growers had a pretty good experience with Camino Real, and uh, and and to some degree Ruby June, uh, to the point to the to the point of not uh, or or kind of swapping uh, 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 Camino Real or Camarosa for Camino Real um, because their clientele. Said that they're 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 delicious. They think they're delicious, and they're just product just as productive, and in some cases uh, even more so. Again, order on time, uh, test so soil early, uh, and uh, provide yourself with uh, timely bed preparation so that you can get your plants uh, in the ground early. Uh, uh, early planning or timely planning is 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 critical, I think, in getting uh, really good yields. So this is a list, our current list of strawberry plug producers. Uh, we have uh, Dixie Green in Alabama. We did have uh, Greenway plants, but I understand you know, Greenway plants in Anniston, but I understand that uh, they are no longer uh, producing uh, plants. And uh, we have an out of state list here. Uh, but if you uh, if you don't have this list and you need this list, please just contact me and I can uh, I can provide it for you. So that's uh, the end of this presentation. Hopefully next year I'll have another slate of varieties and I will uh, answer any questions that you may have um, uh, with this current uh, set of varieties.